Okay, this Windows on Raspberry Pi project is becoming interesting almost every other week now. It's only been a few weeks since I uploaded a video on Windows on Raspberry Pi. Now, I am just pleased to make yet another video with more updates, more issues resolved, and of course, better performance. If I didn't tell you that this is done with a Raspberry Pi, you would think that I'm using a desktop or a laptop. As you can see, I installed Microsoft Office 2010 and it has no issues operating. I know I have tried 2013 in older versions and that worked too. I have no reason to believe that Office 2016 will not work. If any of you guys have a way to test 2016, make sure you let me know in the comments section. I'm interested to know and of course it can help other viewers making this life changing decision. Just joking, of course. This will not change your life, but it will make it a lot more fun. Anyway, in this video, you will see Windows 10 running much better. I mean, really, really better. Better than before. Onboard Bluetooth audio working. Many more applications running better, including Zoom, Google Meet, as you're witnessing at this very moment. This is like day and night between where we were two months ago. There is barely any lag. Audio is clear video is clear i apologize for not being able to play the audio for you there is just so much echo to really enjoy this video like i said zoom also works and you can even download the app after i show you how to install windows on the pi and resolve some installation errors i'm going to share with you one of the easiest way to debloat windows with one simple script to make things even better we will max out the ram up to 8 GB and overclock the CPU to 2 GHz. If all the above sounds good to you and you would like to know how that's all done, make sure you strap in and brace for some knowledge. For my advanced viewers, you can skip ahead but for those that are new to the Raspberry Pi world, what we're going to do is install Microsoft Windows 10 on a little microcomputer known as the Raspberry Pi which is the size of a credit card. All right, now fast forward, and I imagine you already have bought a Raspberry Pi, a power supply, HDMI to micro HDMI cable, and a micro SD card. You have all that. Now let's have fun. On a separate computer, a Windows PC, Mac, or Linux based system, go to this website and download Windows on Raspberry Pi Imager. Then you need to go to this link and download this exact version, Windows 10 Insider Preview 20279.1, ARM64. Make sure it is ARM64. I have to mention that if you are watching this video two or three weeks from today, this may change. So make sure you download the correct file for this video. You can experiment with newer releases, but I guess you are on your own, or you can always reach out and ask for some guidance. Okay, now let's get to the serious stuff. Click Next for US English. I am going to pick Windows Pro. Next, leave everything checked as it is, and click Create Download Package. This will automatically download a file for you. That should go to the same folder where your WR imager is located. Now grab the two files and extract them and delete the old files or the zipped files. Inside this UUP folder, you will find this file, UUP download windows.cmd. Click on it and it will initiate the download and the conversion process. This will take approximately 20 minutes or longer depending on your system. Once that is done, now we need to go back to the imager and write the ISO file to the SSD drive or the micro SD card. I am using both. Uh, you're going to see throughout this video that I'm using an SSD and a micro SD card. Both work fine. Yes, the SSD is a little faster, uh, but um, I mean, a micro SD card will work just fine. Okay, now that we have the Windows Pi Imager started, we can go ahead and click on Next, select Raspberry Pi 4, click OK, select SSD or microSD card, I prefer an SSD for better performance, click Next. We need to select the image file 
This should be the ISO file that we created a little while ago. Next, select latest package on the server. Accept. Next, select latest firmware. Next, next, install. Again, this should take about 15 to 30 minutes. You will get this message when everything is good. Now we can go ahead and remove the SSD or micro SD card from the computer and connect it or insert it in the Raspberry Pi. Keep in mind that only USB 2.0 works at this time. USB 3.0 does not work. Now that we have everything connected, we can start the Pi. It will reboot on its own after a few minutes. Allow it about 5 to 10 minutes and you should see this prompt. Go ahead and select your region. I'm selecting the United States. Now, this is where things get a little hairy. Some of you guys may run into this error, but no panic is necessary. All you have to do is press Shift F10 on your keyboard. That will bring up Windows command prompt. Enter these commands. I have all these commands in the video description. Once you have all the commands entered properly, you will get this message saying just a moment. Allow this process to run for a little bit. I recommend nothing less than 10 minutes. Then you can go ahead and power down the Raspberry Pi and start it. Starting the Pi will bring you to this screen. No password is required. Allow it to load all the files and just answer any questions on the screen. Okay, now that we are in, we have a few more things to take care of. First, we need to update Microsoft Edge. I find it to be faster than any other web browser, but I have not really used Chrome or anything else yet. Once the browser is updated, we need to go to WR GitHub page and download three files for our Bluetooth to work. Bear with me here, the steps are simple, but they just need to be done in a particular way. First, we need to click on RPI Bluetooth testing and download this file. Next, we need to go back and click on RPI 4 and download this RPI EFI file. Go back to the previous page and click on this GitHub link to download our last file. Now that we have all the three files downloaded, we can close out, go to downloads folder and extract the two files that need extraction. Now we can shut down the Raspberry Pi, remove the SD card or the SSD and insert it back in our other computer. We need to look for Windows Drive and locate our files. If you don't want to go this route, you can simply download the RPI EFI file from GitHub link. It's just a matter of convenience. We need to copy this RPI file, go back and locate our boot drive in the SSD or micro SD card. You should see an identical file name, delete that file name and paste the RPI EFI file that we copied to the boot drive. Next, we need to overclock our Raspberry Pi. So we need to go to the configuration.txt and set our CPU to two gigahertz. You can go higher to 2147 if you want. I'm good with 2000. This is it. Now we can go ahead and eject the SD card or SSD from the computer and hook it up to the Raspberry Pi. 
start it and make sure you hit escape before the system loads. We need to configure one thing before we move on. As you can see, our CPU is set to 2000, which is what we want. So that is taken care of. Hit escape, go back to advanced configuration. We need to disable the RAM limit. If it is set to enable, we will be limited to 3 gigabytes, which we do not want that. Windows is resources hungry and that is just not enough. Hit F10 to save yes to confirm. Escape, escape, escape all the way back to the main menu and select continue and hit enter. Your Pi should boot into Windows 10. Now we need to install Bluetooth driver. So let's go to device manager, system devices and look for this sucker. ARM PL011. We need to uninstall it and also delete the driver software. Okay, now let's go back to downloads and install the drivers. We will need to start with this one, SERPL011. Open the folder and right click on this file. Install it. Once done, go to the next folder, select this file, right click and install. A very important step, you must restart the Pi after this. If all goes as planned, we shouldn't have any problems enabling Bluetooth and adding a Bluetooth speaker. So let's find out. Sounds like success to me. All right, moving on. Now let's confirm that our configuration is set up properly. We will check out task manager. As you can see, we have a two gigahertz CPU and we are taking full advantage of the RAM. Man, I can feel the difference already. We just have to do two more things and we'll be done, I promise. First thing we need done is to set Windows to the best performance. That's easy to do. We need to type in this PC in Windows search box. Right click. Go to properties. Advanced system settings. Settings. And we need to check adjust for best performance. Apply. OK. Get out of all that. And we need to get on Google. Type in Debloat Windows. And look for this website. Credits to Chris Titus Tech. We're going to work with his December 2020 update. So let's copy this link. Go back to our windows. Go to the search box and type in PowerShell. Right click and run as administrator. It will take a minute to launch. This is where we need to paste the script that we just copied. Allow it some time to execute. I would say about two minutes. Now, this is a matter of preference. I click on essential tweaks and on the left side, it will tell you what it's doing. Once all the tweaks are done, you can click on security updates only and that will wrap things up for you. The rest of this video is basically some YouTube videos playing. Nothing is speeded up or edited. I just want you all to get a feel of how the system runs. As always, I appreciate you spending time with me. If this was helpful to you, like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Catch you in the next video.
nghĩ thôi Oh, <laughs> 